for the first time, got the entire fleet lined up, and I gotta say, dude, that Grand Cherokee is looking right, though, with that matte black wrap on it. The mission for right now is to pull off that passenger side step from the Wrangler. I pulled off the driver's side one, like, I don't know, three, four weeks ago. Someone's coming down today from the Facebook marketplace to pick up the both the side steps from the Wrangler. I also picked up some um, OEM Rubicon sliders for the Wrangler too. So we'll throw those on later and get right to throwing down some tint here on the Grand Cherokee. Pre-cut window tint from eBay. Should be interesting. Also, I know I mentioned in the last video that we would be starting the next major mod on the Tundra today, but unfortunately that's not working out. So we'll get that started this upcoming week. So stay posted on that. And also too, the rock sliders are not the next major mod for the Wrangler. That's still to come as well. Get the Tundra started next week and then the Wrangler uh, rock sliders put on today and then also some wind team for the Grand Cherry. Sir, I love your truck. What do you do for a living? Oh, 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 you're a she, her. <laughs> Thanks for the assistance. No problem. Now, one of the downsides to having such a thick setup is you gotta take U turns a little bit wider because, oh, she ain't as nimble as she once was. But bam, just like that. Anyways, change of plans. Meeting the guy who was picking up my side steps here at the 76. He says he has a white Jeep and that looks like a white Jeep right there. And it looks like a man looking for someone with side steps. And just like that transaction complete, let's get back home and tint some windows. Oh my gosh, dude. I just got back home, parked this thing outside for the last 30 minutes. Look at that pollen, that's insane. Show you guys a little before shot here of this. Well, for one, a beautiful day. I haven't seen blue skies in about eight years out here in California. It's been nonstop rain for the last many, many months. So that's nice, but yeah, clear windows. I gotta have something up here, not to mention, I burn really easy too, so there's also that. But I think for the sake of privacy alone, I love having window tint in the front. She thinks I'm weird. I'm talking to a camera right now, and she can see me doing that. It's just not good, it's not good. We need window tint. So I have 5% tint going over the rear glass as well as these front two roll-ups right here. So 5% over this factory tint right here. It's gonna be pretty dark, and then of course 5% by itself over these two is going to be pretty dark as well so that'll look really nice kind of complete the whole black outlook on this thing so let's get back home and get her tinted up so in the tube right here we have the pre-cut window tint for the grand Cherokee here and i'm not super worried about tinting the side windows right here they look pretty flat and relatively straightforward but the rear glass here is going to be a whole different story because we need to heat shrink the tint before peeling it and sticking it onto the inside of the glass using a heat gun and stuff like that to mold it to the shape of the glass before installing it. Remember when I said they say vinyl wrappers can't tint and tinters can't vinyl wrap? Well, that's because if we use techniques that we would use on vinyl wrap on window tint, then we're gonna destroy the tint. And unlike vinyl wrap, window tint does not self heal. So if we get a crease in it or overheat it and burn the film, there's no going back. We have one piece of tint per piece of glass. We mess it up, well, we're, that's, 30 bucks on the tubes for all windows isn't too bad actually so ain't too big of a deal but feel harder now so I'm getting kind of nervous getting it all the way shrank I don't know how perfect this part needs to be but I feel like this might be good enough I'll try a little bit more I 
All right, here's where things get fun. So I'm gonna soak down the inside of the glass. So while I'm peeling off this liner, making sure that I'm keeping the sticky part of the tint nice and wet. There's one thing I learned on YouTube, you gotta hit them with the H pattern first. So one right down the middle, and then right down the sides there, like an H. All right, looking good. Squeegee out all of the excess wrinklage. Okay, got a few wrinkles there, but I'm thinking that we can use some heat, and since we have adhesive on our side now, we can use some heat, lay that down, and it'll probably stay. I'm thinking, hoping. I don't know. Tried to get rid of the fingers, the last bit of fingers with it being installed and it didn't completely work out. So now some of it's kind of brittle, has no stick to it. I got a lot of the fingers out, but then the last little piece here, right on that dot matrix and a little bit past in certain areas, uh, does not want to come out. So basically the lesson learned here is to next time completely heat shrink the tint to the shape of the glass before peeling it and sticking it on. Otherwise you'll have some fingers to live with for the rest of your life. That's what I'm talking about. This one is super easy. Hopefully no fingers come up, but if they do, it'll be super minor, I'm sure. It's like that, we have these two windows tinted back here in the cargo area, and I couldn't imagine it being any easier than these right here because it's super flat, there's nothing in the way. Now moving on to the back two doors, windows, and it's gonna be a little bit tricky because it's super tight right up in here on the sides and on the top there. Super tight fit and the bottom as well. So I'm hoping we can get it into all the sides without crinkling the film, to my only concern. The thing with window tint is there could be the smallest speck of dust between the glass and the film, and it'll show up times 100 once you lay the tint on. Oh, it's doke. Um, push the tint up to the top of the glass there, okay. That looks good right there. Now I'm gonna squeegee the very top portion down. So that part stays. And now I'm gonna roll that part up. I'm gonna lift that flap right there on the bottom so I can tuck the tint into it. There we go, perfect. Pushing the tint in. I think we're doing good actually. All right, I'm gonna spray a little bit of this on top of the tint so it glides nice and easy. A couple fingers coming up here on the bottom. up there on the bottom, try to tuck that in. Get rid of some of these wrinkles. Okay, looking good. Spray a little solution on top. A little squeegee out the excess. But I th think that was good. Ooh, you like that? You impressed. I am impressed. You your, your boy, your boy content. That looks sick. It does. Looks awesome. There's a little bit of a, uh, we'll see it better in the daylight tomorrow, but a little bit of debris kind of all over on the side right here. Mm. It's not terrible, but if you look for it, it's definitely there. I know exactly what to do in the future though. What I've seen some tin guys do is they'll throw, and obviously I didn't focus on cleaning the door panel as much as I should have and all mm -hmm. this trim piece right here. Mm -hmm. But what tinters will do is they'll put like masking tape on here. So it avoids getting debris on the film. When you like slide the tent off the tape, you don't get debris coming off it. So I got a little bit of debris, but overall, I mean, everything came out pretty good. And what's cool too, is there can be a few wrinkles. I don't have to heat shrink the film mm -hmm. on these side glasses right here. Um, like the rear glass, I had a heat shrink out on the outside. As were this one, they can have a few wrinkles and you can get them out um, after you install the film. You can throw some heat on it and squeegee it down and it comes out. 
So all, all the uh, wrinkles are gone, just a little bit of debris, like I said, but otherwise, everything's looking pretty good over here. So to finish the driver's side window out tomorrow, a little more light, do some better prep on sort of cleaning everything up first, throw some tape on it, and then see how it comes out. But so far, not bad for a $30 tent job all the way around, huh? Now I have to do her car, so that's, that's cool. But hey, it's, it's a practice. Good. I'm, yeah, I'm good with that. More practice is good. Anyways, we'll finish up tomorrow and uh, see how it all came out. Alrighty, so it is the next day over here. One more piece of tent to go, and that's the front driver's side window right here. Although this time, I think I know what to do to avoid there being any debris caught up between the glass and the tent on this door right here. And that's pretty much just gonna be doing a little more prep, popping off this door, this door, wow, I just bit my tongue. <laughs> popping off that door panel right there, taking off this plastic trim piece right here. Also, I'm trying to keep the uh, next major mods there out of frame, so I'm gonna keep you guys at a uh, proper angle here. But anyways, yeah, pop these panels off right here and that should make it a lot easier and less risky for debris getting caught between the glass and that tin. Also not have to deal with squeezing it between that weather strip right there and the glass. That should also make it a lot easier and less risky of wrinkling it up and stuff like that. So anyways, prep the door up and get this last piece of tent thrown on to that front driver's side door and See how it comes out. Look at this. Glass is dangling now. So I pulled the molding out from inside of the door and that plastic trim piece around it and the door jams out of the way as well. The idea here for the soapy solution between the glass and the tank is to give you some play time. So you can kind of move it around a little bit, place it where you want it, and then once I have it there, I'm glad to squeeze you right on top of the tent and it slides nicely. Just like that, dude, check this out, wow. The window tent brought everything together, it looks so sick. I'm gonna pull the Jeep outside, park it in the sun for a few minutes, and make sure we don't get any more fingers in the tent and stuff like that. In the meantime, pull a Wrangler inside and throw the rock sliders on, and then we'll go back outside and check out how it all came out. <laughs> to absolutely crush this chick-fil-a right now i've eaten all day and it's three o'clock so your boy's pretty hungry but dude oh my gosh that looks so much better than those side steps and of course having nothing there at all does not look good either because then you're left behind with those holes and you see a bunch of the frame and stuff like that and of course these will offer us some pretty good protection on the trails when things get rocky too so pretty exciting stuff right there but anyways let's get back down to the house and check on the cherokee and see how the tent job came out hopefully it came out good but we shall see. And just like that, everything all blacked out officially, black on black on black, looking super, super sick. And the tent came out really nice too. If you're looking that direction, it looks pretty good. Although up close and personal, didn't come out great. I thought I was being so, so careful, but what is that, dude? Oh my gosh. I did my literal best to make sure no contaminants or no debris, no dirt, no nothing got between the film and the glass, but somehow that happened. I don't know. I feel like when you peel the, uh, the tint, it's super static and everything just wants to grab to it. And that might've been what happened. I don't really know because I did a really good job. I thought at least making sure everything was you know nicely cleaned up around the areas and stuff like that. I made sure when I peeled the laminate off the tent and took it to the window that nothing, you know, there's nothing in the, I don't know, nothing I thought could have gotten on the glass at that point.
but I was wrong. Anyways, yeah, we got some speckles. Now, according to some tips and tricks I've learned on YouTube, you can kind of heat this area up or these little bubbles up and lay them down. All these little bubbles you're seeing right here are from contaminants caught between the glass and the film and it leaves a bubble like look to it. The back windows do look pretty good because the windows were already tinted. So it kind of gave us some, I guess, room for error. I don't see any bubbles at all or anything like that on the back windows. Everything came out really nice back here. The rear glass, on the other hand, as you guys just seen, we had some fingers down there, nothing too crazy. It's not that noticeable. Again, we have some room for forgiveness back here on the rear glass as well, because it's already tinted. And so throwing the tint in there, you can't really see all the defects that well, but this window, oh my gosh, this one's pretty bad. So yeah, as you guys can see, we have a lot more contaminants there on the passenger side. Uh, yeah, pretty brutal. So all to the side there and then all along the top. But you know, if you're like 45 feet away and squinting your eyes and you have like dirt in your eyes also, you can't really tell it's bad. It doesn't look terrible then. I feel like to do a perfect window tint job, you need the like most perfect, like no breeze, no nothing environment to make sure no dust gets caught between the film and the glass. Or like while you peel the, the, um, the liner from the tint, the point of it having no liner on it to putting it on the glass is a very, very crucial moment where things need to be super, super like my garage door was open. There was a light breeze coming through. I feel like things you can't even see with the naked eye can look like that once you lay the film down on it. So got to make sure things are like ridiculously clean. That's the most important part with uh, window tinting, I feel like. But uh, oh, well. Next time we'll know. As a whole, it looks so sick though, dude. All blacked out, oh my gosh. This is probably the last video on the Grand Cherokee. I don't really have many more plans for it. If it was something more than I plan to use it for, which is just, you know, daily driving, running errands, stuff like that. I'd probably do something more, like throw some 22s on it, a system, underglow, that'd be sick right there. And maybe, you know, a light exhaust just to make the V6 sound a little bit better, but it's, it is what it is. It's just going to be a little like town cruiser or whatever, maybe like a road tripper or something like that. So anyways, yeah, that's pretty much it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Catch you guys on the next one very soon. Till then, peace out. Despite the fact the window tint didn't come out absolutely flawless, it's still really nice having some window tint. 5% tint here on the front two windows, 5% on the back windows here. Everything is nice and private, which I love. So now we can jam out to Barbie Girl all day long. No one can judge us hidden. In case you guys are wondering what it's like to look outside at 5% wind tint at nighttime, it's a bit dark, that's for show. But it's even darker over that factory tint. I mean, you can kind of see silhouettes of cars, like headlights and stuff, but yeah, it's pretty dark. Yeah.